Don't hide anything from the executive or the pitch. Please text me back. They're charging more than $800 an episode. You're not gonna make anything that's the next soul leveling. There's, it's, there's no way. Hello, and welcome back to the Manga Education Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Chen. I am a owner of a studio that makes manga and webtoons. We currently have five to 10 original series that are all being in production, some of which are going to anime adaptation, which is what we've been working on a lot recently. Let's get right into your questions. You guys submit questions through Patreon and the comments and you know all my social media, and this is where I answer them. Before we get into those questions, please smash the like button so that people who are interested in the anime, manga, and webtoon space can and learn more about the industry through my videos. And if obviously you're new here, maybe you should subscribe so you can see more of these Q and A's, but also more of the educational stuff. So without further ado, let's get right into the questions. First question is by Tracy, who is a new person on Patreon that I've never seen before, but thank you, Tracy. Hey Brandon, for an aspiring writer thinking about creating a webcomic, that what are some of the ways to save on cost of production marketing? I can't draw, so most likely I will have to find an artist. Some people charge about 800 an episode. How do I market this comic? Should I start posting on social media and hope to gain traction? Yes. All right, so the cost. It's really hard to make a really high quality action series off of $800. I'll tell you that up front. You're not going to make anything that's the next soul leveling. There's, it's, there's no way. You're not going to be able to afford an artist that's actually done this before, probably, because if they've done this before, serializations, webtoon, manga, they're charging more than $800 an episode for 50 to 60 panels. You can't afford a background person. You can't afford really strong colorists. Maybe you as the writer are not getting paid anything if you're given that budget. So yeah, 800 is is, is pretty low. I would say consider your genre. A romance and drama as two genres are really low cost to produce because you have two characters that are talking. A lot of drama is just like two characters talking in one background and it's going back and forth. The camera's been going back and forth. And the drama is actually what is making people read, not the action, not a huge explosion. It's not like constantly changing scenes to like really epic battlefields and that kind of stuff. You can have a really dramatic scene happen in a classroom, buy a 3D asset for like 20 bucks, copy paste that into Clip Studio, have two characters, someone draws those two characters and then have them talk it out in an episode and that can be a lot cheaper of an episode than jumping through an airplane the airplane's exploding behind you and you're fighting people through the air. Those are really expensive scenes to do, so just a consideration. First off, consider your genre. Second off, consider your art style. Different art styles cost more money. Soul leveling costs thousands and thousands of dollars per episode. Something like Calvin and Hobbes, black and white. Really simple art style. Probably costs a lot less. Consider those two things. Probably some ways to cut your costs right there. Marketing the comic, yeah, posting on social media. That's how I got my start. That's what I rely on as a, as a big driver of a lot of my traffic. It's the reason a lot of my series have these millions and millions of views is because I just post videos about my series. Next question is by Small Honk. How do you prepare a one shot? I've been thinking about drawing one, but feeling vapor locked about not being able to have the best art. So I'm not an artist. A lot of manga editors will judge you based on two factors, right? It's like the narrative and then also the art. They also judge you on like how your panels are flowing, which I kind of attribute to both a combination of art and writing. I'd say one of the key things that go into a one shot that I've learned from doing a bunch of one shots, many of which have failed, is by trying to bite off more than I can chew. When you're doing a one shot, just like when you're doing a short film, if you do something that's so expansive, you're trying to build the next One Piece, create the next Naruto, the next whatever, Dragon Ball, you're not gonna be able to do that in a one shot. The world of those series is so expansive. There's so many characters, there's so much power system. You shouldn't be introducing like a hardcore power system in a one shot, right? You're not gonna get too deep into it because you only have 50 or so pages to really make this thing happen. Instead, I think that one shots that focus a lot on character, which is the most important part of manga, one to two characters, probably max, because anything more than two characters is really hard to flush those characters out in a meaningful way within 50 pages. Really focused on just like their growth through the one shot. You know, there's a lot of other things like Kisho Tenketsu, which is the narrative structure for a lot of Japanese, Korean, and Chinese works. There's also studying like how to make good panel flow, like uh, using Hikigoma. Hikigoma is the panel before the page flip, you know, preparing for the page flip for a print format like manga. Yeah, there's a lot of things. The most basic feedback I would give you is a very concise, clear narrative that is not too much content, right? The smaller the concept, the better because it's really easy to expand stuff and a lot harder to condense things. That's my advice to you, small honk. Gan Bana is asking a really juicy question from Patreon. Everyone is on Patreon, by the way. Everyone that's answering these, asking these questions, they're on Patreon. If you haven't joined the Patreon, free to join, link in the description. I'm posting all behind the scenes stuff for the studio. I'm posting advice every Monday that I don't give to anyone else. I'm posting scripts. I'm posting behind the scenes, PSDs. Like I'm posting everything on Patreon. That is for education. Definitely check it out. Uh, link 
in the description of Patreon. Gigan Bana is always asking questions on the Patreon, so shout out to you. Have you read any of the Viz original publications? If you did, did any of them stick out to you in particular? Do you have any advice or tips when pitching to big name companies? Gigan Bana, great question. Well, sort of great question. Uh, I really want to work at Viz Originals, so Viz, if you're hearing this, shout out, please text me back. But I'll say, I know that they're working on a lot of good stuff behind the scenes because a lot of my friends are working at Viz Originals already. So I know that there's a lot of cool stuff that they're working on because those are really talented people. Now, the Viz Originals that they've released so far, not so great. When I think about Viz, I think about manga, in particular Shonen Jump manga. And so when I expected Viz Originals to, to release, I expected stuff that would be on par with a lot of the Japanese manga out there. But from what I've seen so far from Viz Originals, usually the series, is that it's very Americanized. And again, it makes sense it's like, you know, the international mangaka. But what I would like to see is manga that is made by international creators that would be picked up in Japan. Someone in Japan would pick this up. This could be serialized in Shueisha, in Shonen Jump magazine. The only difference is creators, because they're from different backgrounds like France, US, whatever, they are creating a different kind of narrative or story that would not be possible, you know, from someone who lived and spent their entire life in Japan, right? Because, you know, different people from different locations have different stories to tell. And so that's what I expected Viz Originals to be. It's not that. It's very novelists that are working on it. There's people from American comics that have worked on it. People who have never worked on manga, you know, <laughs> are doing it. It's interesting. I would say, I'm not sure what Viz Originals is trying to do at the moment, but I would say if they're seeing this, my feedback would be lean into people who really dedicate themselves to the manga craft. And by manga, I mean like Japanese manga. These are people who are international that are trying to work in the manga industry in Japan. Those are the people you want to be working with. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that are literally international manga. I don't know what's going on with Viz Originals. So and did any of them stick out to me? No. Do any of them compete with any of the stuff that's in Shonen Jump at the moment? I don't think so yet. Again, I do know that they're working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes. A lot of my friends are working on cool stuff. Sure that they're gonna put out some cool stuff, but yeah, right now, nothing. Nothing that's gonna be the next Naruto, the next One Piece that is coming out from what I've seen so far. Not to hate on anyone, but that's just my my honest opinion from the perspective of like manga, Japanese manga. Do you have any advice when pick, pitching to, to big name companies? Conciseness and clarity is the biggest thing when it comes to pitching. A lot of pitches that I've seen, you take a massive concept, the next Game of Thrones, and there's trying to plug this thing into like a pitch that an editor or an executive is gonna be looking at for like maybe five minutes tops. And maybe they won't even look through the whole thing. Maybe they'll glance through the log line, be like, I don't understand what's going on, flip the page and throw it away. So I'd say clarity is super important, making sure that your log line captures exactly what makes your concept really strong. Making sure that all the information that you want to be conveyed, don't hide anything from the executive or the pitch, right? Don't hide anything. Don't be like, you know, oh, like, you know, you have to ask questions to find out. No, they're not gonna ask you questions. They're just gonna take a look at your pitch. If they like it, they'll reach out. If they don't, you're done. Clarity, making sure it's concise. No one wants to read a 100 page pitch and no one has time for that. And then making sure that you're not hiding anything. It's really just show all your best work in that pitch because you want them to, to buy it, right? You want them to give you the chance. So just making sure that concise, clear, and conveys your knowledge and what you're trying to do. And I forgot the last one, but whatever I said, that's, what you should do. How do you make your comic ads? <laughs> I make my comic ads by having marketers, my marketing team, make videos and edits, and then I post them. I don't actually make all these ads unless I'm the one filming them on, and it's my face, but a lot of them I have people editing for me. How do you grow your following? I post multiple videos every single day, and I've been doing this for four, five years now? Yeah, I post every single day, like multiple posts a day. So I'm like chronically online. Does voice me hire character designers? They do. Can I be a manga if I'm not good at art? Come on. That's, that's me, you know, here's what I'll say. You know, you might, you, some people could say, Brandon, you're a mangaka, some people could say you're not a mangaka. I'll say this. Japanese editors and professionals have called me a mangaka to my face. Do I consider myself a mangaka? If other professionals consider me a mangaka, then I will consider myself a mangaka. Secondly, do you have to be good at art? There's a lot of duos in Japan and in the manga industry that, you know, there's a lot of writers that are not artists. Good example. Death Note, done by a manga duo. There's a writer and an artist. Food Wars, writer, artist. Dr. Stone, writer, artist, right? These are a lot of series that I just named that are writer, artist duos. One Punch Man, writer, artist, but also the writer is also kind of an artist because he can do storyboards. At the end of the day, a mangaka is anyone who's creating manga. It is anyone who's creating manga, anyone who's, and, and manga in Japan is, is interesting because they'll call like a webtoon creator also a mangaka probably. So yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting term when you're using it in 
international stage, but you know, can you be a manga if you're not good at art? You can be a writer like me. I flipped a coin to decide if I was gonna be an artist or a writer when I was 14 years old, landed on heads, I became a writer for the rest of my life, and I'm still a mangaka. I'd say yes. How quickly does it take for you to write a chapter of Webtoon typically? A chapter of Webtoon, here's some context. I wrote novels with over 100,000 words, one novel a year for multiple years when I was in my teens. And then I went to comics, and then I started doing serialization and Webtoons and, and manga stuff. Now I've written hundreds of chapters worth of content in terms of like Webtoons and manga and serialized work. With all of that, chapter writing comes naturally speed. So don't look at my speed and be like, I should be pumping out those numbers, those are rookie, you know. Don't be thinking like that. Serialization is the intersection of quality and speed. You want to work fast because you want to get your chapter out to your partner and the artist as fast as possible so that they can start working. But you also don't want to put out garbage because then your readers won't like it. It's the intersection of speed and you can't spend forever to write the thing, but you also have to make it good. I found the right balance for me is I will write the entire story in pre-production, which means the entire narrative, everything that's going to happen in the entire story. And they do this a lot for animation, film, TV, and that kind of stuff. All those story beats are outlined in pre-production phase. And so when I sit down personally to write down a script, I can write somewhere between between three chapters in a day, maybe taking two hours per chapter, have that all be for one series. You know, that's almost a month worth of content in one day. That's assuming I'm a freaking machine and there's no phone calls that I have to take. Usually I do around two a day. I'd say around two hours per chapter, I can pump it out. It's, it's pretty good quality. And then maybe I do a little editing polish like later that night or the next day. And you know, you really see how that translates when you see the storyboards and that kind of stuff. So it's not like the script is like the end all be all. Like you can look at the storyboard, make some adjustments, that kind of stuff. But certain series are harder. So God Game, really easy for me to write. It's a shonen action series, super easy for me to write. I have this series called Angel Wings. Every single chapter, I'm doing like six versions, which means that I'm spending almost a week doing that chapter. And that's because that series is a lot more intensive narratively and artistically. We're trying to push the boundaries of what's possible in the webtoon space. So Angel Wings is one of those series where it's like a full metal Aquas Brotherhood, like a free rent. Like you're trying to redefine what's possible in the in, in, in your current industry. Naturally, that one is all focused on quality. So it just takes me more time. I'm doing redos, 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 redos. God Game, for example, I can just write it and it, and it usually is pretty entertaining and it's interesting and it's choreographed and it's a lot really easy to write because it's mostly a battle manga right a series so all right last question from instagram how can i find amazing ideas to write multiple stories like you the best way to find stories or ideas is by reading a lot and consuming a lot watching movies reading watching whatever it is you get ideas naturally from being inspired by other people's ideas that's why my title and my username is inspired author fun fact because i'm inspired every idea i believe comes from another idea but ideas can also come from things that are not fiction, right? They can come from hearing a story on the news. They can come from you had an experience while traveling abroad. They can come from you fell in love one time. This is how you felt. That sparks a new idea. So I think the real best way to creating good ideas is by one, reading and studying within your craft. Two, reading and studying outside of your craft. So like movies, film, TV. Three is by living your best life. And by living your best life, which a lot of mangaka don't do because they are trapped inside working all day. But if you live your best life, you can see the world. You can get all these other ideas. You can go to a museum. You can get ideas from the museum. I get so many ideas just from studying other people's cultures and by studying history and by traveling to different places in the world and by just living life. That's probably the best way for you to get ideas. And I just jot those down. And then one day I'm looking for a story to come out. I just go into my vault of ideas and I'm just like, yeah, let me just pick and pick one, pick one, just pick a story. That would be my suggestion to you. Anyway, I'm going to end the video there. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let's comment a special, a special term if you made it to the end. Let's comment fish in the comments if you made it to the end. Make sure to subscribe and leave questions for the next week's video. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Join the Patreon if you want more education. Link in description. Peace.